everyone welcome back to my channel my name is jonna and today we're talking about my weight loss journey i am on a glp1 medication and the one that i am on is mongiorno is the same as zepbound mongiorno <clears throat> pardon me mongiorno is for type 2 diabetes and zepbound is for weight loss um, my insurance doesn't cover weight loss so i went through the medical side and was tested for my A1C. I was pre-diabetic and I have other issues like um, high cholesterol. There are other things that the doctor can put you on to lower your weight because of health reasons. And since I was pre-diabetic, I could get on this medication under the umbrella of a diabetic medication. I know a lot of insurance companies don't carry weight loss. If they do, if yours does, you're lucky and you can take ZepBound. If you cannot take any of these because your insurance won't approve it or uh, your out-of-pocket cost is too high, there is a discount you may be able to get from Eli Lilly. I cannot because I'm on Medicare. Eli Lilly won't give you the discount if you're on Medicare. Um, but if you cannot get the medication approved by your insurance company, then you may want to look into going to a compounded um, telehealth group that will prescribe and fill a prescription of this. And you can get the prescription from your doctor, but the telehealth group um, can give it to you at a lesser amount. Now, the compounding facilities are able to make this right now because Eli Lilly hasn't been able to keep up on production. They recently said that they are able to keep up on production, but the FDA is saying, no, we're still going to allow compounding facilities. So right now it stands that compounding facilities, yes, can make the medication, and it's the same medication as you get from Eli Lilly, but it would be under the name of a semaglutin, which would be the Ozempic and the Wago and the Wangovi, and the Zepbound and the Mongiorno are under a tricepatide. So this produces the GLP-1. It's a hormone that releases naturally from your body. It slows down your digestive, so you absorb a lot of the stuff. For me, it's great because I had gastric bypass, and that sped up my uh, dumping out of the stomach. So this slows that down. It also, and I wrote this down because I am not a doctor, and I need to let you know, I'm not a doctor. The information I'm giving you is my experience what i've studied and researched and should not be taken as medical advice consult your physician this is just my journey and hopefully it'll give you some insight and you can talk to your medical professional if you have any concerns or are interested in doing something like this my doctor brought it up to me i had been thinking about it and researching it my doctor brought up to me and asked me if i wanted to go on ozempic and i said well you know i think i'd like to go on Monjarno if that's okay because it's a newer medication and it actually does one thing more than the ozempic um, they both have the hormone that releases but it does something else. I can't remember what it is right now. I'll, I'll figure it out next week. <laughs> I'll have the answer for you. But what this does is it slows your digestion. So you feel full longer. And it reduces the sugar from your liver. And then it also, if your sugar is high, it increases the insulin from your pancreas. Now, I'm not eating a lot of sugar. Um, I'm basically on like a low carb diet, but not totally. I mean, I'm, you know, I had a uh, rice cake today. Um, I haven't had bread, but if I felt like having a sandwich or bread, I'd have bread. I'm not eating as much. 
So I'm not really on a low carb, but I am on a reduced diet. I mean, just because. So when I do eat, because I'm not hungry as often, I want to make sure I'm getting protein. So that's why it's kind of like a keto or low carb diet. I'm eating a lot of protein because you do need protein to maintain your muscle. And you, anytime you have weight loss, you have muscle loss. So if you want to build your muscle and stay strong, you want to make sure you get adequate protein every day. Right now, I'm trying to get between 100 and 150. Um, 150 is a strong goal. I'm probably getting close to 100, maybe 120. I've added this week protein shakes because you can get a lot of protein faster that way. And I'm also using um, Fairlife milk because it does have protein. I'm eating cottage cheese, I'm eating yogurt, I'm eating meat, I'm eating chicken, I'm eating beans. I make chili a lot because that's a great source to have something with a little flavor and you can put a little cheese on it and you have the beans and the meat and you're getting a lot of protein in that. Back to the GLP-1. So what it does is it it's a hormone that your body already produces, but for some reason, I think maybe some people don't, or maybe it's dormant, or I don't know. But the one thing it does is when you eat, it tells you you're full. And then it also tells you when you're hungry. Um, and it sends the message to your brain. So for me, I don't know if I ever got those messages correctly to my brain. Um, my brain was always telling me to eat. <laughs> my brain was always saying, oh, wouldn't uh, some chips be good right now? Or wouldn't a piece of candy be good right now? Or even a yogurt, even healthy food. A lot of times if it was, hmm, I think I'll have a yogurt. Oh, but you know what? I think I'd rather just have some chips and salsa. Yeah, I'm gonna have some chips and salsa. Um, I didn't always make the best choices. And to be honest with you now, I don't want the junk food. For some reason, I don't know if everyone's this way, but when I think about it, I'm thinking about the healthy food. I'm thinking I want protein. I want, uh, you know, nuts. I want a uh, snack on nuts or a snack on a piece of cheese or have some cottage cheese. Or And I know a lot of people don't like cottage cheese. I'm going to tell you, I put a little salsa in it and I love it. Okay. But I like cottage cheese. So, um, but chicken, eggs, have eggs on hand, hard boiled eggs. I love scrambled eggs. I like salsa in that too. Um, I use cheese. I know a lot of people keep the fat low, but I'm not really worried about the fat because I've been on low carb diets before and the fat isn't the problem. For me, anyway, the problem is the carbohydrates. So when I eat, I'm a bread eater. I could, before this, I could just have toast. I could have toast and butter. I could have crackers and peanut butter. I could have cereal. Um, those are the things that I would gravitate to if I want something quick and easy. So right now I am eating protein, protein, protein. Today I actually made a shake because I have a bunch of blueberries in the refrigerator and I thought, well, I'm going to put the blueberries in the, in the protein shake and I put chocolate, protein powder. I put Fairlife milk and you can just put water. I did put a little water. I put some ice and I put some blueberries. That was it. I had bananas and I don't know why I didn't think of putting a banana, but that is a great protein shake. The protein powder had 30 grams of protein and the Fairlife milk had like 30, I think. And so together, that was like 60 grams of my protein. Now, it made two big drinks. Um, I couldn't drink them both at the same time. 
so I had one and I have one in the fridge. So later on tonight, while I'm watching TV, I will have maybe the other protein shake. That's 60 of my grams of protein for the day. So that's pretty good. That's like half of the protein. Then I had a couple pieces. I have cut up cheese. I had a couple pieces of cheese and I had a little bit of uh, chili. So I had just made a fresh batch of chili and I had a little bit of chili. I did have a rice cake. Um, I wanted something crunchy and I got a cinnamon apple rice cake and I had that. So that's kind of what I had today for my eating. And that's typical every day. I, you know, I may have meat, I may have um, chicken. Uh, I don't eat a lot of fish, but if you like fish, fish or shrimp, those are great deals to have. Exercise, I have been doing some uh, weight exercise not a lot uh, i was riding the bike and i think we're going to get back into the bike this week uh, probably tuesday because of my work schedule but um we've had a lot of mosquitoes and pretty bad heat so i haven't been doing the bike normally i do the bike every morning i run the dog and i ride the bike i lost some weight before i started mongiorno by riding the bike so so for me riding that bike's a great thing the weight training, I've been doing some weight training. I have noticed a difference. I'm starting to notice more of a difference in the way my clothes fit and in just my ability of dropping a few pounds. I'm always pretty good about losing weight. I, I don't really, I mean, you know, the first 10 or 20 pounds, I'm really good. Um, after that, I it gets stuck. So that's what we're gonna look for here, if I get stuck, <laughs> if I get stuck. Because I have lost the first week. Now I am on, let me tell you what I'm on, first of all. I am on the starting dose, which is the 2.5 of the Mongiorno. This is how it comes. So you pay for one month, and I'm lucky enough that my insurance pays the majority of it. This is almost a $1,300 medication, 12 and change, and my copay is $47. Now, I will pay that until, I think, November, and then I don't know. I'm going to have one or two months where I'm going to have a higher out-of-pocket. I don't know what it's going to be. I'll have to wait and see. So this is how it comes. And there are four pins in here. So it's a month or it's basically four weeks. There is a needle there inside. I don't know if you can see it. This pin, these are already used. It had a cap on it and you take the cap off and then it says to throw it away immediately. I know some people put it back on. Then up here, there is a dial. It's lock and unlock. So what you do is you put this on your skin, and I'm not gonna put it on my skin because there is a needle there. I don't think it's infected. I used it. So, it, you know, if there's blood or something on it, it's my blood. There's a needle in there. And this button is normally up a little bit. And then there is the lock and the unlock. So once you place it on the, wherever you're gonna give you your shot, you place it, then unlock it, then press the button. When you press it, it will click. You hold it down and it'll click again. And when it clicks again, I think that means it's done. But I count to 10 or you can count to five or whatever, just wait a bit, then take it off. And you will see, if you see the spring, you see the spring in there, that means that the medicine has gone out. If you hold it up and the medicine's in there, you'll see it. It'll actually have like a little bit of a bubble. You can make sure it doesn't freeze because if it freezes, I think they say you have to throw it away. And yes, these have to be refrigerated. So um, 
And this is a trisepatide. Do you see that? It says trisepatide injection. And these are called pen injections. So you get four. And then I have to actually check with my pharmacy to see if I dis can dispose of them there or what, okay? Because these have a needle and you want to make sure you dispose of them properly. So that's why these are... Um, still in the box and I still have them. Okay, so my doctor increased me to a 5.0. Now I haven't taken it this week on Thursday. It was my fourth injection. I completed my third week, my fourth injection of the 2.5. Next week, I will take my first injection of the 5.0. I asked to go up. My doctor thought I should stay a little longer because he knows it could cause... Um, gastro problems and whatnot. But the 2.5 is really a starting dose. If you feel great on it, you may want to stay on it. I told him, <clears throat> even though I feel it's working and I feel good on it, I have moments where I can tell that it's starting to wane a little bit, the food noise, okay? Now we'll talk about the food noise a little bit and what that is. I heard that before I ever took this and it really did, it didn't mean anything to me. Food noise, I'm like, okay, so food noise, like, you know, you, you want something, you crave something. That's what I was thinking, food noise. About four hours after I took my first shot, the food noise stopped. And what does that mean? I think it's like an obsessive compulsive thing, to be honest with you. I wasn't thinking about food. I wasn't, and even if I thought about food, I wasn't obsessing about food. Um, the only way I could explain it, if you see a commercial on television or you smell something really good, think of it that way. You smell bacon cooking or you smell pizza or garlic or you smell barbecue and you think oh my god i'm so hungry i could go for you know a barbecue ribs or i could go for a hamburger or i could go for a piece of pizza or i could you know when you smell that smell of a food that you love you smell bacon you think oh god i could have a blt right now go really good um that's food noise but for me that was constant that was constantly going i so i would be cooking breakfast and i'd be making eggs and bacon and avocado and toast and you know whatever you make and when I'm cooking that, thinking how good it was going to be, I'd be thinking about now for lunch. For lunch, I could make some fried rice and chicken. Or, honey, that's enough. Or for dinner, I could make some spaghetti and garlic bread or whatever. I could, maybe this afternoon I'll bake a cake. Um, food was constantly on my mind. If I saw something, I think, oh, I think I'm going to have some of those chips. And I'd eat them. And I didn't eat them slow by any means. I'd eat them. And I'd keep eating them. And I think, oh, I don't, these aren't even doing it. But I keep eating them until I could think of maybe something else that would be be better and eating just to eat eating just because like today I had the desire for something crunchy so I had a rice cake you have a desire for you want something crunchy or something sweet or something this or something but it's all the time it's all the time and you can get done with a meal and be full 
to the guilt and be thinking, God, you know, I wish I had saved room for dessert. Why? <laughs> or waiting until you have a little bit of room left to have something else. Oh, I didn't save room for dessert, but I'll have it in an hour when this digests a little. It's kind of like that Thanksgiving. You eat your Thanksgiving, you gorge on all the food, you have a little bit of everything because you don't want to miss anything. And then two hours later, you're in the kitchen making yourself a turkey sandwich or whatever, whatever. Well, with this, you don't have that food noise. You don't have that need to obsessive compulsive over food. And I can't really explain what it is, but it triggers something in your brain to just relax. And so I took my shot the first time and four hours later, I was sitting here in this chair and I just felt calm. I felt a calmness. I felt like when you worry about something and then you don't have to worry anymore, how it's just that relaxing, calming feeling. I don't know how to explain it. I really don't. I mean, that's the best I can explain it. Um, I do once in a while feel it creeping ever so lightly back in. Not like it was by any means. Um, but once in a while, I think. And the thing is, it doesn't last long like before. Before, if I let something fleet by, then it was followed by something else. If I didn't eat that candy bar, then I ate something else to make up for it. Because I didn't eat the candy bar, I'll have a sandwich. That's healthier for me than a sugary candy bar, right? Um, okay, so that is head noise to me. And it gets rid of that. That is the one thing that allows you to be able to not overeat. Don't eat until you're so full you can't move. And then as soon as you have room again to eat again. I mean, honestly, most of the times now I just feel normal. I don't feel hungry. I don't feel um, full. I, I mean, I'm, I'm never full. And I'm never hungry. I don't eat anymore till I'm full. I eat a, a small portion. And then if I want something later, I go back and I have another small portion of something. But I don't sit down with a big plate of food. Um, I have these little bowls and I usually go over and I'll get a couple scoops of cottage cheese and I'll eat that. And then sometimes I'll make a plate and I use the smaller plates. Not because I'm trying to make my portion size look bigger. It's just, that's all I need. I'll have a couple scrambled eggs, a little bit of cottage cheese, and maybe some avocado, and I'm fine. That's it. And then I don't want anything else. Things that I eat, okay, I talked about the protein drink, the, the smoothie drinks, um, and then I eat fruits and vegetables, but chicken meat cheese fruit nuts and protein drinks now i take magnesium to counteract constipation which is a side side effect magnesium also helps you sleep and believe it or not the nice thing about sleeping is you're losing weight when you sleep and you're not eating <laughs> and the nice thing is um, if you sleep eight hours, which I have a hard time, I really push myself. If you sleep eight hours and say you eat dinner at seven, okay, you eat dinner at seven or you have the last thing to eat, whether you want to call it dinner or snack or whatever, the last thing you have is at seven o'clock. You go to bed, say at 10 and you wake up at six. 
get ready. Um, you have your coffee, but you don't eat. And you don't eat anything until 11. And it's not that hard to do. If you don't eat anything until 11, you've done a 16 hour fast. If you don't eat anything until seven, you wake up at six, you get ready and you eat something at seven, you've done a 12 hour fast. So fasting is not that hard. I, I used to think fasting was like, oh my God, you get up and you can't eat for 10 or 12 hours. No, you've slept eight of those and a couple before you went to bed, you didn't eat. And then a couple after you wake up, you don't eat. And then you've got a 16 hour fast. Okay. I'm drinking my tea. I don't think I had this yesterday. Um, today I noticed I was getting a little constipated. Not really, but a little bit. So this, I think I talked about last time. I don't know if I showed you guys. This is the tea I have. You have one of these every night or when you feel you need to. This is, and I don't get any money for this. This is just something I take. This is my experience. And I want to let you know that um, this is something that I take for constipation and it's called Smooth Move. And it says peppermint. Sen, senna peppermint. It kind of tastes licorice to me. Anyway, it is uh, these teas. You find them in the grocery store. They have different ones. This one is great for constipation because it's not going to make you go too much. It's just going to make it easier to go. And I have. I try to just sip on this at night. I may not drink it all. I may. But it's just something, you know, you're going to have water. You might as well have this. It has a little bit of flavor to it. Uh, if you like licorice, to, and you might want to try it. To me, it tastes like black licorice. I just noticed today on there it says peppermint. It does not taste peppermint to me at all. No. And they have another one that is even more licorice, and it's called throat coat. And I mentioned this in my other video. It coats your throat if you have a sore throat. And it, it these are just medicinal teas. So uh, there's probably other ones. This is just the one I get. And the other thing I do are nuts uh, that give you fiber. So almonds or walnuts or any kind of nut you like. Um, I like cashews. I know they're higher in fat. But I do have cashews or I have a lot of almonds and walnuts right now. Uh, raisins, if you like them, any kind of fruit, grapes. Um, right now I'm having cherries and nectarines and vegetables. So that'll give you more roughage if you need it. There are other things you can take, um, I think like Metamucil or fiber gummies people take. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of things out there you can take. If you are having an issue with that, don't let it get to a point where it's bad. I mean, I've seen things where people like went to the emergency room. I'm like, well, why didn't you do something before it got that bad? I don't know. Maybe it just snuck up on them. But anyway, Oh, and magnesium. I think I mentioned that, but magnesium also, besides helping you sleep, it helps with um, keeping you moving. Let me go over the numbers of my weight loss. And I am very excited about this. Um, and I went over these last week, so it's going to be the same, but I'm going to add a week. So I started out, well, I lost seven pounds prior to starting on this. From the time I went to the doctor and he suggested was about two months. And in that two months, I lost seven pounds. And that was just riding my bike and that exercise. And it was a lot of exercise because I had a dog that was running and I was riding and I had a dog in my basket. So I was kind of 
you know, I was getting really sore in through my shoulders and arms from the dog pulling. And, you know, sometimes the dog would be pulling me and sometimes I'd be pulling the dog to get it going. Um, I tried not to get it to where the dog was actually pulling me because that's not fair to the dog. But I did want to exercise the dog. So a lot of times it would get running, but then it would stop abruptly, you know. So, um, you know, it sees a leaf or something, it just stops dead. And so it was pulling. My arm was getting pulled a lot. I lost seven pounds prior to starting on the GLP-1, which was great. It was a great kickstart for me. Then the first week, I lost four pounds. I went from... 231 and I started at 238 but I went from 231.8 and that's when I gave my first shot that's what I weighed I went to 227.8 which was a total of four pounds four pounds was significant and I was happy with it the next week I went down from 227.8 to 224.2, which was a loss of another 3.6 pounds. Then this week, I went from 224.2 to 221.6, which was a total of, you know, I said three, but I really think It is 2.6. Yeah, it's 2.6. And that is a total of 11, or I'm sorry, it's not 11 because I, I calculated this wrong. It was 2.6 this week, which is a little less. So each week has been a little less, which is 10.2 pounds. When you add in the seven pounds I lost before I started, that is a total of 17.8 pounds. 17.8 pounds. And I can tell you this week, I've already gone down from that amount. So I'm continuing to lose. Um, and I think if I was exercising, I'd see better results. If I was doing more, if I was doing the bike, I'd see better results. But I'm happy if I can lose a couple pounds a week, it adds up. And the thing is, I don't want to get, you know, on other diets, I get to this where I've lost almost 20 pounds and it just stalls out and my body gets used to it. I don't think my body's getting used to this. I'm still losing. I still have no cravings. And next week I increase my dosage. Now, once I increase my dosage to the 5.0, I wanna try to stay on that dose as long as I can. The 2.5 is kind of a starting dose to see if your body will adapt and you won't have too many bad side effects. The 5.0, I feel, is going to be an okay amount to stay on. They're saying now, and if you listen to anyone that's been on it a long time, they say try not to go up too fast because that's what people did initially. They did four weeks here, four weeks here, and they kept going up. And they're saying if you're okay on a dose, stay on it and don't tricate up to the next one. Um, because you can only go so far. And so if you need to, if you've stalled out and you're starting to see things come back, you know, habits of wanting things more come back, um, then yeah, go ahead. Now, in saying that, um, so what? Do I have to be on this forever? Probably. I'm hoping that the medical community and the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies come to a realization that this may be a maintenance medication for people um, 
forever. I mean, if you're on a high blood pressure medication, you may be on it forever. I'm on a thyroid medication. I'm going to probably be on that forever. This medication works. Um, long term, is it bad? I don't know. I don't know enough about drugs. I'm not a doctor, but I know it's a hormone that the body naturally releases. So it's not that scary of a thing because it's something you already make in your body. And does my body just not make it as much as the person that doesn't obsess about food? I don't know. I don't know. Am I going to have to take it forever? I might. And if I do, I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with the cost, so I am hoping the cost of this drug goes down. But if I can have my health in line and I'm not overweight and I don't have high cholesterol and I don't have diabetes, it is what it is. And I'm okay with that. But that is kind of jumping the gun. I'm in my fourth week right now just finished up my third week and um we'll have to see when i get down to my goal and i am deciding at that time where we go from here i know a lot of people have gone off the drug and gained all their weight back i had my gastric bypass and i kept a lot of that weight off for a long time but i gained it all back this has caused people that are compulsive shoppers, drinkers, gamblers, eaters, <laughs> to kind of not obsess about those things. So, that being said, I will be back again for week four and to give you the update. I can tell you I am still losing. I will bring you the update on how I feel and if I have any side effects from the 5.0, uh, nausea, constipation, uh, sleeplessness, indigestion. Um, some people have diarrhea and... Some people get really tired. I don't know. We'll see what happens on the 5.0. I'm excited. I hope you'll join me. I hope you'll be back next week. Until then, you guys, stay safe and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.